beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. If I should stay, I would only be in your way. So I'll go, but I know I'll think of you every step of the way. And I
an assurance. Let us pray. Gracious God, we continue to worship you. We continue to tell you thanks for life. We thank you for health and strength. We thank you for being a good God to us. Loving God, we thank you for Sandra. God, you have loaned her to us for a season. And now God is pleased you to take her. As we gather, oh God, we celebrate her life. Help us that in all things, Jesus Christ will be glorified. We pray that, God, you will have your own way among us today, that whatever we do, your name will be lifted high. God, we pray that you will speak, and that, God, even for those who have not yet said yes to you, that, oh God, they will surrender to you before it is too late. Because your word reminds us, what shall it profit us, even if we gain this entire world? And at the end, we lose our soul. Help us, therefore, to set our house in order and to do your will, that when you call us, we will hear, well done. Take full control as we look to you and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We will now have the first lesson, Psalm 91 to 12. Alia Ferran and Naomi Campbell. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Today I'll be reading the first lesson from Psalms 90, verse 1 to 12. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye, children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight, or but as yesterday, when it is past, as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep in the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth, and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down, and withereth. For we are consumed by none anger, and by the wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, we spend our years as a tale that is told. 
The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Twelve and last, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Here endeth the portion of God's holy word. I say, thanks be to God. Thank you. We will now have a selection by Hilarise Bourne and Dear Brown, after which we'll have the second lesson, Janet Brown and Vanessa Raisman. In this order, please. Mike.
Okay, thank you very much. Vanessa, just hold a minute for me and let us allow Dr. Brennan to come and know he has another appointment. Dr. Brennan? Tomorrow may never be mine. Feed me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Good morning, everyone. I must apologize for cutting the line but I have another appointment way in St. Anne. But nothing in the world would stop me from being here this morning. Even if I had to put that off, I would have to spend five minutes with her. Not everybody can say that I know Sandra all my life. And all my life means 58 years. And I have known her since then. We grew up together. She was ahead of me in terms of age, but somebody who I always, always admire. Now, we are here today, and I just told Henry a while ago, it's hard to swallow. It's like gravel in your throat and dust in your nose. It's just hard to go down. Why is it that my life should value more than yours? And who gives you the moral authority to tell me to stop breathing? If yours value a million, mine value the same. 
what right do you have to take my life? And for what? I have lived close to death all my life. And all that we fight for while we are here on earth equals to zero. All that we have covetousness, bad mind, and hate for, it all adds up to zero. When you die, you go through a thing called rigor mortis, where you stiffen out, and you open your hand, and you grab onto dirt, the earth, the land that you fight for. And as soon as you go down, Mr. Witta, you wash it out of your hand. You can't carry it with you. Don't give me any land. Give me permission to work it. And I will farm and make a living. Because when I die, not even a handful I can take with me. Not even a handful. It hurts. It hurts. And you all know what I'm talking about. You're just not verbalizing it. But I have passed the place where I am afraid of anybody. And the most you can do is kill me. But Sandra didn't have to go this way. Did not have to go this way. But no sin will go unpunished. None. It's hard to swallow. In the dark of the midnight, I have often hid my face. While the storm howls above me, there is no hiding place. The crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe, till the storm passes by, till the storm passes over. And the thunder sounds no more Till the storm roll forever From the sky Hold me fast Let me stand In the hollow of thine hand Keep me Till the storm passes by Many times Satan whispers There is no need to try For there is no end to your sorrows and no hope by and by but I know that thou art with me and tomorrow I will rise where the storm never darkens the sky oh till the storm is over and the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe till the storm passes by. 
And when the long night is ended And the thorn comes no more Let me stand in thy presence On that bright peaceful shore In the land where the tempest never comes May I dwell with you there Till the storm passes by Oh, till the storm passes over Oh, and the thunder sounds no more Oh, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Oh, let me pass, let me stand, oh, in the hollow of thine hand. Keep me safe, Lord, keep me safe till the storm. This storm must stop, passes by. Hallelujah! 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 Mm. Vanessa, Janet. Good afternoon, everyone. The second lesson will be taken from Second Corinthians 13, and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a thinking cymbal. As though, excuse me, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all my mysteries and all my and all knowledge and uh, sorry, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and uh, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, O oh Lord, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but when face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Here is the word of the Lord.
Thank you. If you can stand, let us stand as we sing this chorus. If you miss me, don't come searching. If you miss me, don't come searching. If you don't find, then you know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in a twinkling of an We want you to sing it like you know it. If you miss me, oh, don't come searching. Yes, if you don't find me, oh, you know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in a twinkling of an I want to sing it like a boy. If you miss me, don't come to it. If you don't find me, then you know that I'm gone. Oh, if you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in a twinkling of. I want to hear it again. Oh, if you miss me, don't come searching my Lord. If you don't find me, then you know that I'm gone, gone, gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in a twinkling of an eye. What an assurance! Oh, if you miss me, don't come searching, my Lord. If you don't find me, oh, you know that I'm gone. God. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in a twinkling. I wonder if we can do it one more time. Oh, if you miss me, don't come searching, my Lord. If you don't find me, then you know that I'm gone. God. If you don't hear, oh, hey, Hallelujah. Hey. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, if yes, you sir. miss, yes, yes sir. Oh, hey. oh, 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 yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. an assurance if you miss me don't come searching Pastor Barnett Pastor Barnett you come she'll come and take us not through but through can we bless the name of the Lord can somebody give the Lord a shout of hallelujah in the house come on we are in a thanksgiving service somebody shout a hallelujah Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me take the time out this morning to greet the Holy Spirit of God, which is the head of my life. Bless the Lord. To our officiating minister, Reverend David Tucker, Reverend Anthony Chong, Pastor Vernon Walters, and if there's any other minister that I may fail to name, Pastor Bell, and I've seen some other pastors over there 
officers, members, bereaved family, loved ones, squire, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Greetings, everybody. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, somebody? So just punch your neighbor and say, neighbor, what a mighty God. We're in a Thanksgiving service for the life of our sister Sandra Risen, one whom God has given to us. But it seems that we have missed her um, at a time that we were not prepared. But in uh, everything, uh, there's a time and a season. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Today is a day of celebration uh, for a good woman, uh, a virtuous woman uh, who had part departed this life. Uh, somebody give the Lord a praise. Uh, and today we might not feel happy to say goodbye, uh, but it is so. And we're going to celebrate her because she had done well. Uh, and we need to give God praise for her life. Uh, somebody shout a hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah. The narrator is yours truly. I'm Pastor Vital Barnett, uh, and I'm giving God praise. I've known Sister Sandra for a period of time, and I tell you, she is somebody that I do admire. And I think uh, the writer Proverbs have talked about her, a virtuous woman. Amen? Amen, somebody? And so I'm going to ask for all of us in our tribute, uh, bless God, I want for you to do not more than two and a half minutes, uh, accept the eulogy, and if there's a remembrance, uh, and the message, those are the only items that we will give a little extra time for. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. What will it be when we get over ya? Oh, somebody give the Lord a praise. Somebody give the Lord a praise. You may kill this old body. Lay it down in the grave. But I've got Jesus. 
on your couch. <laughs> Take him away. I've got Jesus and you can take him away. You need to tell the devil from me. Oh, I've got Jesus and you can take him away. My God, from me. You may kill this old man. Away. Can I get a witness one more time? Oh, I had a rat's nose, and you can't take him away from me. I have Jesus, and you can't take him away from me. Somebody say, I have Jesus. Come on, somebody say, I have Jesus. You need to talk, let the devil hear you. I have Jesus. Somebody open up your mouth and let the devil hear you. I have Jesus. Somebody open up your mouth and say, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. And you can take him away. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and shout Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and shout Jesus. Somebody clap your hands another time and shout Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going into the tributes. Tributes number one, Darren Risden, nephew. Tribute number two, Dr. Desmond Brennan have already gone. Eric Taylor. Tribute number number four. Lowell G. Morgan, managing partner of Noon School, Stillon and Company. That's is it Lowell? Morgan. Yes, managing partner of Nunes. Amen. 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 And you will come in this order. God bless you as you come. We will take it from there. So Darren Risden nephew, put your hands together for him. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we gather here to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman, a woman that I know as Auntie Sandra. As we reflect on her journey, we remember the many cherished memories and the impact she had on our lives. One thing that always stood out about Auntie Sandra was her warm and welcoming nature. Every time I arrived at the airport, I could always count on seeing her familiar face in the crowd. She had a make, way of making you feel at home, even in that bustling airport environment. I remember those moments when I would be stopped and questioned, which happened all the time, about who I was visiting. And without hesitation, I would be able to point into the crowd and say, Auntie Sandra, she's over there. Auntie Sandra was not only a loving aunt, but also an avid traveler. She took us on countless trips, exposing us to new experiences and creating lasting memories. Whether exploring the vibrant streets of Kingston or being up to trouble in the home parish in Clarendon over the weekends, 
She made sure we never missed out on the beauty of this island home. She defined Auntie Sandra. She was a pillar of strength and support for our family. When my parents were building their house, Auntie Sandra rolled up her sleeves alongside them and got involved. She worked tirelessly alongside them, ensuring that progress was being made. Her dedication and commitment to helping others extended beyond her immediate family, as she lent a helping hand to other members of the extended family as well. My auntie never missed a family celebration and made great efforts to be there for us at key moments of our lives, including mine and my sister's weddings. Her words of wisdom delivered in the readings are remembered to this day, and it is truly fitting that I'm here to do the same for her. Auntie Sandra's love for her family knows no bounds. She believed in the, informant, in, sorry, she believed in the importance of family unity and made sure that everyone felt included and valued. Her presence at family gatherings brought joy and laughter to all. From the moment I first set foot in Jamaica, she embraced me, leaving an indelible mark on my heart. Today, as we bid farewell to Auntie Sandra, let us hold on to those happy memories we shared with her. She was a constant source of love, support, and strength for all. Her legacy will be forever etched in our hearts and minds. Thank you very much. Yeah, to the member of the platform and um, family and friends, um, you can tell you guys, this is what Sandra really would love to see. Because Sandra, you know, we could dead, dead, nothing. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, before we go further, out here, I must say something to you. Everybody know me as Din Din. And Miss you on long space behind Eric Taylor. I know Din Din. But anyway, as sister, as sister Barnett said, with time is limited. And it's two and a half minutes. So if I was to talk about Sandra's, ladies and gentlemen, it would have taken me from here, go on me pin, and come back. I'm going to Brian Zill, and we still talk. So all I can say, ladies and gentlemen, people, Dr. Brennan said, which I'm the elder one for Dr. Brennan, because me watch him come up. But wherever we go, he always talk about us in Brian Zill. All I can say, Sandra, I, I don't know if she knew she was going, because um, as most people know, I have a business place. And um, Sandra came there the Saturday evening or the Saturday night. And um, I can call one name we came where with. I mean, in the some place not the crowd where where is my brethren. And we came and we sat and we, we had a drink. And when she was going to work, going back home to Kingston the Sunday evening, she would always wave to me and say, Oh, sir, cause me gone. And that's Sandra. And ladies and gentlemen, we missed her and we missed her. You understand? Because, as I said, the, um, the, the night when he came there, we had a drink, and Sandra really, she drank at one malta. And by chatting and chatting, because we talk about so much things, she said, give me one more malta. And um, time was running out, so I said, Sandra, we have to go home now. And, um, and she said, all right, because that's it. We're going home. And, um, wow, it's, it's rough, it's rough, it's rough, it's rough, it's rough. And um, I, I'm going to ask one person in the crowd to stand up. I, I know him not a man who I go jump too fast, but I'll jump up. Bingo, you just raise your hand and stand up and make a look on your run at the back there. Watch him down there, sir. All right, all right, all right, sir. That's, that's you. You understand? So we were together the same night. We had the drink together and we chat and everything. So, and then, ladies and gentlemen, go right to my business place again. I went shopping the Thursday at the wholesale. The man went in at the wholesale, my phone ring. When we look at my phone, as you know, you can't see how I call upon the phone. Them. A bingo, you are calling me. I say, well, bingo, call me for now. Because you know, now I call me. So I say, hello. And he asks me if I have a certain individual number. I said, no, I don't. But... And then before the man comes across my phone, he says, you know, you want to do Sandra? I say, no. I say, no. And like when the man hang up the phone, the man says, Sandra gets shot. And then I start to call, I call Paula in the sister. 
and she didn't answer the phone because, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Mm. It's rough. But you know, just after that, my phone started ring again. Everybody, but my firing, I call me. Din, 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 you hear what I'm... Then me stop answering the phone now. Oh my God, then me couldn't finish my business. God, because cutie is my... Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's rough, it's rough, it's rough. Because right now, I still have a member of the family right now who does dead for me again. So it's rough. So ladies and gentlemen, let's continue to enjoy this Thanksgiving service for Sandra because she deserves it. She worked hard. She worked hard and she worked long hours and she always been on the road picking up feeding for QT. QT, where are you there? What up here, QT? What up here? What up here, QT? What up here? I love you, QT. Mm. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for this opportunity. Blessings. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, all. My name is indeed Lowell Morgan, and I'm from the law firm of Newness Schofield, Dillon and Co. Sandra worked with us for close to 36 years. I asked the moderator to allow me a little more than two and a half minutes. I didn't ask for one minute for each year, <laughs> but just a little more than two and a half minutes. I understand that it is understandable. Nunes Schofield, Dillian, and co-partners, attorneys at law. The first thing I want to do is to just ask the Nunes Schofield family to stand. You, you can sit now. Sandra Annette Risden is affectionately known and called Sandra Rizzi Risden, but for most of us, Miss Risden. At age 26, Risden began her Im impeccable journey of just shy of 36 years with us. She was institutionally affirmed within the conveyancing and probate department as secretary to Mr. Patrick Brooks, then secretary to Mr. Jeffrey Mordecai, paralegal to Mr. Patrick Brooks, and finally paralegal to Mr. Alexander Kozlatik. A one-man woman, Sandra was married to Nunes. She played her role with full faithfulness as the professional midwife, mother, caregiver, and counselor throughout the firm's developmental and advancing stages from 4 Duke Street to 6A Holborn Road. The accolades of her unparalleled performance bestowed by her employers, colleagues, and clients brand her as a paralegal celebrity. I give you a few snippets acclaiming her career's authenticity. At her shock demise, the media had to ascertain her employment status via virtual interview with the head of Nunes. The community had perceived her as an attorney at law. Listen as a few eyewitnesses testify of the exalted humility and diligence, knowledge and affability blended in one woman. The Honorable Mr. Patrick Brooks, OJ, the president of our Court of Appeal, says Sandra was recruited to fill the vacancy of my secretary just as I was being oriented at Nunes. 
the synergy of our work, he says, rhythm, anesthetized numerous teething pains, such as the adaptation from typewriters to computers and printers, the sharing of one printer via manual networking, and even the choice of printing paper. But the maverick Rivzi was a principal overcomer, he says. Justice Brooks says, Sanja helped me manage my transition to the Department of Probate and Succession smoothly through her visible and non-threatening work ethic and peaceful cooperation with Mrs. Goscott, my other secretary. Justice Brooks concludes, it is hard when a person who is so approachable, hardworking, dedicated to her duties, and loyal to the firm, is killed in the way Ms. Risden was. As we try to make sense of what seems a senseless act, we have many questions, but no answers, says Justice Brooks. However, we remember kindly her smile, her laugh, her courtesy, her drive, her work ethic, and her ambition, all the attributes that made her unique. I, along with three of my other colleagues, speak on behalf of the firm and the extended family. Sandra was a paralegal who had extraordinary knowledge of the areas in which she worked. Many clients interacted with her were not aware that she was not a lawyer. It is said by more than one of our clients that she was better than the lawyers. Since her transition, the firm has had to reorganize, reorganize the conveyance department to manage her at desk and assign two lawyers to her almost faultless files. Our clients were vocally impressed with Ms. Risden's power excellence in the management of the business affairs. They appreciate her frequent follow-up calls and her pleasant and polite attitude. One, for example, said he would miss her immensely. He quipped that he would now have to go inside the building, as Risden always met him on the outside. He lamented that such an exceptional customer, service practitioner as Ms. Risden, didn't deserve a horrific death. Sandra was the epitome of emulative loyalty, dedication and commitment beyond the call of remunerative duty giving the best unstintingly every day. So for example, the Wednesday before her passing, she left the office at 9 p.m. And yet, the following morning, before 7 o'clock, she was on her way to work. A slave? No. A partner, a developer, a title holder of Nunes. Yes, she was. Sandra's peers and supervisors loved and respected her. Thursdays are sad days at Nunes. Last week, for an example, Nicole came to my office for a signature. She was looking quite down, almost in tears. When I asked what was wrong, she remarked, it is Thursday, sir, and Sandra. It has been like that for many of the staff members. Our senior partner, Mr. Patrick, almost every officer work setting has a staff member whose personality traits of sincerity, innate kindness and warmth touch the feelings and hearts of others. Those persons make what would be tedious and mundane work day filled with warmth and cheerfulness despite the stresses of the job. Sandra Risden was such a person. Such was the measure of Sandra. 
She was a caring and decent soul who radiated these qualities in her daily life. She helped me, says Mr. Foster, to restore my faith in the essential goodness of humanity. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Sandra's immediate supervisor, Mr. Alexander Kuzler, the chairs. For me, it is impossible to fathom life at Nunes without Sandra. We would have worked closely together for decades. Throughout the phase of my car career, where the glare was on me to perform, produce, and develop, it was my two paralegals, Rizzi and Marlene, who were the engine room that powered me forward. Many here may recollect that I playfully and jokingly dubbed Sandra as Corpy. As the years went by, she was promoted to Sarge, inspector, and in recent times was recognized as superintendent Christian. In truth and in fact, I did her no justice. Mr. Cool says, Sandra was a general in her own right, a general of no mean order. Marlene Goscott, who was at Nunes when Risden joined, remarked that Sandra was not just a friend and co-worker. She was my lunch and road partner. We were each other's Uber driver when necessary. She had a passion for food and motor cars. Sandra was a generous giver, whether it was monetary or knowledge in the field. She was always willing to assist in any way she could, and many times I was the benefactor of her generosity. Today, says Marlene, is a stark reminder of the memories that are left in her absence. But no more. Sandra is gone, and we turn our teardrops into sparkling diamonds of her memory. As her elegant persona, so was her distinctive sense of gratitude. She lived Jack Maritime's proverb, gratitude is the most exquisite form of courtesy. Sandra was always the first to write to the partnership, expressing thanks for a salary increase, a bonus, a Christmas or Easter gift. Whatever the position was, Sandra always expressed thanks. If the firm was not able to present gifts, she would send an email to say she understood and appreciated the firm for all it had been doing for the staff. A quintessential professional, an Einstein of social intelligence, fit for the Guinness Book of Records, Risden. Risden has made Newness Cofield look good for many years. So farewell, Risden. You have lived declaring that each time a woman stands up for herself without knowing it possibly, without claiming it, she stands up for all persons. We embrace the wisdom of Jesus as your life speaks to Jamaica. Fellow Jamaicans, do not weep for me. You should weep for yourselves and your children. We rejoice in your risen status, Risden, because you are like a fallen star who has finally found your place next to another in the lovely constellation where we will sparkle in the heavens forever. Goodbye, Risden. What good, Sandra. We love you. We miss you. We see you on the great resurrection morning. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Oh, what? A sunrise is going to be.
when death will lose its stick at the grave it's victory oh the silence will be broken and the storm clouds rolled away i hear the saints of angels singing oh, but Somebody touch your neighbor and said, the silence. Somebody touch another neighbor and said, oh, the silence will be broken, will be broken. And the storm clouds rolled away. I hear the saints of angels singing. Oh, but hope come in day. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Somebody look over on your neighbor and say, The silence will be broken. Look at them on the neighbor and say, Neighbor, the silence will be broken. Lord. Mr. Morgans and family, I know how it feels. We could feel what you're feeling. And not only that, we see love. We see love. And if any other time we need love is no. Jamaica lack love. Our country lack love. When nothing else could help, only love. Was, oh, somebody give the Lord a praise. When we love each other, we protect them. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not the preacher. But the silence will be broken. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. We're moving on to number five. Kian Fair, Freeman, Goddaughter. Number six, Michael, Kenny, family friend. Number, and then we will go to number eight, Joel Stewart, brother-in-law. And we will final this as there are so many others. Number nine, we get to learn and was said by the family member that um, the MP, Mr. Urshel Brown, so you will come in this order. Ken Freeman, Michael, came of the Lord. Right over here on my left, you will see the lectern to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the church, friends, staff from Nunes and most importantly, the resident family. You may not all know me, but I had the absolute honor of being Auntie Sandra's goddaughter for the past 24 years of my life. We can close our eyes and pray that she will come back, that Thursday, January 18th would be reversed. A woman who is upright, phenomenal, confidential, and the most hardworking. That is who Auntie Sandra was to almost everyone. We can cherish all the memories and let them live on. My godmother was a powerful cornerstone Risten in all her roles in her life. Her lose his Whether it was her family, day and night, or every single weekend in Clarendon, or simply spending the very, very, very few evenings that she took off early from work with my mother in Kingston. She was my mom's best friend and eventually became a fixed member of our family, the Davis family, just like we did with hers. All throughout my years, she helped my mother and my father make certain decisions surrounding my life, always being an open air to better my foundation and success. At 16, I had big dreams. After completing CXC, I dreamed of becoming a petroleum engineer and was desperately reaching out to several companies locally 
to gain some insight through summer employment. Auntie Sanjo intervened at the very last minute with one phone call after they were about to tell me that I actually didn't get the job to land me a job at Jamaica Energy Partners. Although I enjoyed my time there, the career choice didn't last long, fortunately. But it did give me the opportunity to apply to many universities abroad, leading me to where I am now. Auntie Sanjo was always one to encourage, motivate, and stand by my side. She always dreamed of coming to my graduate school graduation in Michigan one day. She never missed a graduation, whether it was at St. Andrew Prep, Immaculate, or even University of South Florida in Tampa. She communicated with my mom every single step of the way. Auntie Sanjo was one of the kindest people I have ever met. Every birthday, I can expect a monetary envelope. On Christmas, in the hardest times, when Nunes did not give her that salary bonus, she even found a way to give me cash in US and Jamaican dollars. As a young girl with oh so many desires, it was certainly a delight. I last saw her on Wednesday, December 27th, 2023, when she came to visit me while I was visiting for the holidays. But between the 27th and the 18th of January, she spent a large amount of time with my mom, never knowing that her end was near. On the morning of the 18th, she was on her way to work, like we all know, a regular day, on the phone with my mother, actually. Her last question was, how many years does Kiana have left in grad school? Sh shortly after, all my mother heard on the phone is Auntie Sandra screaming out that she had died. Those words have haunted me since then. It's ended in many sleepless nights, <laughs> nights where I'm only able to sleep if all the lights are on in my apartment. I could not fathom the darkness. There's not a day or a conversation that my mom, my aunt, and I have had since that we do not talk about what a light she was and continue to be in our lives how she'll be deeply missed, and we will never forget her. I could not end this tribute without reminding us, as we all mourn, about the presence and promise of the Lord our God our Father. My favorite book of the Bible, Romans 8, 18, says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. There will come a day when we will all know the truth, tested and proven through, again through God, anything in the dark must, and I say must, come to, come to light. However, until then, we shall be confident in the Lord of his everlasting promises and love. I pray that God comforts us in the nights that we cannot sleep and in the mornings when you cannot process our new and true reality. Goodbye for now, Auntie Sandra, the best godmother. No one can compete, not even a question. I look forward to the day we meet again. My family, my mother, and I will remember you all the days that we are on the earth. Church, may God continue to bless our hearts, our minds, our souls, our families, our friends, and our enemies. Thank you.
Good afternoon, church. Not mine. Last night I lay asleep in there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Methought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to your King. And then methought my dream was changed, the streets no longer rang. Hush were the glad Hosannas. The little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery. The morn was cold and chill. As a shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill. As a shadow of a cross arose upon a a lonely hill, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, hark how the angels sing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to King. And once again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on his streets, the gates were open wide. And all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of moon or stars by night nor sun to shine by day. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, sing for the night is o'er. Hosanna in the
Hallelujah. Good afternoon. asking the nieces and nephews to go around as the song is been sing. Nieces and nephews. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together. Beautiful rendition. Joey Stewart, brother-in-law. Joe Stewart. Good afternoon, church. Um, January 18, uh, 1924, 
2024 was a sad day for the family. You know, it's, it's a shock that shocked us all, you know, and um, uh, Dr. Brennan covered what I was going to say, but, you know, um, you know, all I could say is that, Sandra, we love you. That's the best sister-in-law there is. And um, she, she was one of the kindest, kindest, gracious person that you could ever um, come across. You know, and we we are so we are so sorry that you know whatever happened to her, you know. Um, and all I can say is that family love each other. Always tell each other that you love them. And whenever you know, don't make things get you know out of hand that you know you're gonna hate each other. Okay, so. You know, just tell each other that you love them and show it. Not just saying it, but show it that you love each other. Okay, and, um, you know, Sandra, rest in peace, my dear. We love you. We always will. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Is Mr. Brown, Herschel Brown, here? Can we give the Lord a praise? Can we give the Lord a praise? If Mr. Brown is not here, then at this time, bless God. Hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Walking with the angels. See glory, hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Oh, we shall have a grand time. Lord, up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Walking with the angel. Glory, hallelujah. Grand time of it, they both have a grand time. Oh, oh we have a grand time. Oh, we shall have a grand time. Oh, up in heaven. My God, we shall have a grand time of it, they both have a grand time. Walking with the angels. See glory, hallelujah. We shall have a grand time of it. I'm a grand time. Oh, when I am dead there. Yes, Lord, when I am dead there. I will see my shoulder. When I get there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I get there. And I have some worship Lord, when I get there, oh, I will sing a song when I get there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord when I get there. Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk through. The first time I see Jesus, I was only there. He took me to that man. And he said, This is your home. I have a feeling in my heart. The best is yet to come. But the best is yet to come. When I walk through heaven's gate, first time I see Jesus. Lord God, I can't do anything. Oh, he told me to that man. John, he said, this is your home. Lord, I have a feeling in my heart. The best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come. When I walk through 
is a little bit hoarse. I wonder if the technician can do something. But it's going to be well. Bunk your neighbor and say, neighbor, go through it. It's going to be well. Tell your neighbor, push through. One more push. Touch another neighbor and say, neighbor, don't give up now. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road gonna be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far. I just can't give up now. But I know the Lord is gonna fix it for all of us. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Selection at this time will be coming from Tanisha Shaw family friend. Let's put our hands together as we make her welcome. Miss Tanisha Shaw is coming to minister to us. God bless you in Jesus name. Greetings, one and all. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Bless the name yes, of we are the in Lord. the atmosphere of worship. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Worship the name of the Lord. Exalt the name of Jesus. Worship the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Many times in my childhood when we travel so far by night falls are we I'll grow Father's arms will slip around me and gentle he say my child you are go we know one more time mm -hmm. many times in my childhood as we travel so far by night falls our weary and go Father's arms will slip around me and gentle, oh Lord, he say, my child, I am going we know. There is nothing to hold me. I'm gonna glimpse of that heavenly light. Oh, praise God. I am going we know. Now the twilight is fading, the day soon shall end. Lord, I get homesick, oh Lord, the further I go. But the Father, oh Lord, has led me, he'd step off. Oh, the way, and now I am going. We know. Need to see some worshipers today. Go, going home. I am going. We know there is nothing to hold. Be I'm got a glimpse oh, of that day. Oh, praise God. I am going. We know now the twilight. It is fading, the day soon shall end. Lord, I get homesick, the further I roam. But the Father, yes, Lord, he has led me each step of the way. I am going to go, going home. I am going home. There is nothing. 
Praise the Lord in the house. Come on, lift your hands and praise the Lord in the house. I know Sister Sandra is rejoicing in the house today. Somebody praise the Lord in the house. Somebody praise the Lord in the house. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you very much, Sister Shaw. Glory to God. Ah, Sister Sandra, I've got a glimpse of the heavenly land and she's praising God even though sometimes we who are left may be sad but those who have reached there and enjoying the blessings of the Lord is saying praise God I have reached home at this time we'll be going to the operatory hymn and so we ask you to give as best as you can bless the name of the Lord if you look on the building and there are others uh, other things that need to be done over over here the offering today will be a special offering uh, hallelujah that will not just be for this building but will be for um, the, uh, 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 her home church uh, bless the name of the Lord and so we ask you to give to the best of your ability and so we ask you to join with us. The ushers uh, will be all over the place. As you can see, they are coming, uh, yes, with their buckets. Uh, and we ask you to give. As we do the hymn, you will remain seated. As we do the song and your program, uh, praise God, what joy it will be. So you will be seated as the usher, they come to you. Inside out, they come to you. A country where no twilight. Shadows deepen An ending day where night shall never be A city where no storm clouds ever gather Oh, this is just what heaven means to me Oh, what will it be when we get over yonder the throne upon the glassy sea. I need our love and control. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. A place where there is no misunderstanding. 
And from all enmity and strife we are free. No unkind words are on the heart has spoken. Oh, this is just whatever it means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder? And join from all that crystal sea. With friends and loved ones we are Oh, this is just whatever it means to me. And when at last we see the face of Jesus, before whose image all does love us flee. And when they crown him, Lord, up all I'll be there. Oh, Lord, this is just whatever it means to me. What joy will be when we get over yonder and join the throne around the crystal sea? Oh, 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 this is just what it means to me. What joy will be when we get over yonder? And join the throne around the glassy sea. We're friends of the Lord once we found in Christ. Yes, this is just what it means to me. And when at last we see the face of Jesus. Before whose image are the signs of free. And when the crown is Lord of all I be there. Oh, this is just what it means to me. Oh, what joy it will be when we got up for you. Lord, I'm trying to get wrong. Around that like Christmas sea, the meet all of one of God's forever. Now this is just what it means to me. Oh, what will it be when we get over yonder? Oh, and join the front around the glassy sea. Whatever means to me, no, this is just whatever means to me. Oh, this is just whatever means to me. No, this is just whatever means to me. No, this is just whatever means to me. What heaven means to me Now this is just What heaven means to me Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a praise Hallelujah. Come on somebody give the Lord a praise Come on praise him with your offering Although you're giving your offering But still praise the Lord Somebody praise the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of Jesus. Glory to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. For those who have not yet given your offering, just do like this, that the usher see you. Yes, few persons over there. Bless the name of the Lord. At the meantime, we'll be moving on as the ushers will still do their collecting of the offering. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. We will be having the reading of obituary, and this will be done by Vanet May Ricketts' cousin. Put your hands together as Mrs. Ricketts come to do the obituary. Come on, clap her, man. Yeah, cheer her. Come, Sister Vanet. 
Cheer her. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Officiating ministers, members of the platform party, family, friends, eulogy for the late Sandra Risden. It is difficult at best to stand before you and attempt to honor a lady who was full of life in just mere words. It is never an easy task to capture an individual in a speech, as words frequently fall short of capturing someone's true essence. Carly Simon, a musician once said, a really strong woman accepts the war she went through and is ennobled by her scars. Anyone who knew Sandra would duly agree with me that she was the epitome of this quote. On the 5th of October, 1960, a healthy baby girl was born to Louise Bailey and Herman Risden. She was named Sandra Annette Risden affectionately called Rizzi. Sandra grew up in the quiet community of Bryant's Hill, Clarendon. During her early years, she attended Crooked River All Age, now Crooked River Primary, following which she transitioned to Denby High School, where she served as a deputy ed girl. She later went to further her studies at Knox Community College. Sandra realized that she had to pursue greatness. So from her early teenage years, she set out to explore the working world. Leaving her home in Bryansville, she journeyed to Kingston, where she was employed at Nunes, Cofield, De Leon, and Company on April 5, 1988. Sandra was an independent and ambitious woman who embraced mob upward mobility. She tried another career path and found herself as a paralegal at the same Nunes, Scofield, De Leon and Company, where she served for 36 years up to the time of her death. Sandra had no children of her own, but she played a motherly role in the lives of her nieces, nephews, goddaughter, and cousins. Her siblings were her pride and joy. She spoke passionately about each of them. And according to her nephew, Jerry, she took on Miss Cuddy's, her deceased mother's role, to become the mother of the house. She worked assiduously to maintain the household and ensure there was never a lack. Sandra enjoyed cooking and took on the responsibility of preparing Sunday dinner for her siblings whenever she was home on weekends. She was a disciplinarian, and no one was exempt from being reprimanded by, by her. She would tell you as it is without prejudice or malice. Sandra accentuated other qualities, such as caring, hospitable, jovial, and resilient. Hence, 
Opportunities presented themselves, and she knew how to seize them. Her hard work was not unnoticed by her superiors, and she was awarded several times for long and dedicated service. She was also to receive a plaque for 35 years of service in January 2022, 24. If you knew Sandra well, you can attest to the fact that she worked hard and played harder. She was outgoing, spontaneous, and enjoyed a good party despite the fact that she could not dance to save her life. Not to mention, too, that no funeral service would miss her. Pauline, Cutie, and her niece out there. She would often have a stock of buttons from funerals she attended. She loved attending church and would do so every, every given opportunity. Sandra's life took many extraordinary twists and turns, but that did not deter her from accomplishing her dreams while impacting her community and everyone who came in contact with her. On Thursday, January 18, 2024, while on her way to work, her life was gruesomely taken. She is predeceased by two brothers and leaves to mourn five brothers, four sisters, nieces, nephews, aunts and uncles, other relatives, and friends. Fly high, Sandra. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together for our sister, Vanette. The life of our sister spent on earth for a time as this. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. And you know, I'm going to ask somebody to touch your neighbor and say, treat me good. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, treat me good. Lord Jesus, somebody shout a hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll continue the remembrance by Dr. Jody and Risden Nelson and Chevenet's Risden Green niece. And immediately following, we'll be having the floral tribute, uh, the family hymn by Tanisha Shaw. And you will come in this order. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Asked to do the remembrance for my late Auntie Sandra, I hesitated. Not because I didn't want to do it, but because I genuinely believe I don't, I don't think I could have managed, you know? But for this woman right here, I would have to do it. Because if she could talk and I did not say anything, she'd have said, Jody, our mistress then, you're really not sitting at my funeral. The task of placing the memories of my aunt in words proved to be difficult. Not only am I grieving, but honestly, this is a hard pill to swallow. Auntie Sandra was not my aunt. Officially, she was my grand aunt. But for easy, you know, we just called her Auntie Sandra. But to me, she was so much more. She was my friend. She was my mentor. And she was one of my biggest cheerleaders. Our initial relationship in my earlier years, I didn't have many interactions with her, to be honest. But I remember every time I went to Brazil, she was always warm and welcoming. And no matter how busy she was, and you know that she's a busy bee, she would stop. She would ask how I was doing. She would ask how school was. 
It was during my university years that Auntie Sandra and I developed a deeper relationship. I cannot really recall how the arrangement came about, but I became her companion on her journey back to Kingston every Sunday, or the Sundays when I was home. If you know my aunt, you know that she worked in Kingston, but Clarendon was home. And every weekend, if she had a chance, she was coming home. So on these Sunday evenings, when I call her, I say, Auntie, what time are you leaving? Nothing earlier than 5 o'clock. We would set out. It was during those rides. We would listen to all his music. We would talk. The conversation was always easy. We would have the bag of cane in between us because she swear that would keep her awake on the road. And I got to know my Auntie Sandra. This woman, she was easygoing but fiery. She was level-headed. She held good conversations. She could listen. She was extremely down-to-earth. But most of all, she loved her family, and she was dedicated to her family. I also discovered on those journeys that my aunt had other jobs, because in those nights we became delivery people, delivery people. We would be dropping off eggs and chicken all over Kingston, someplace I don't even know in the night. She had to get them delivered because she did not want to bring them to work the next day. She would then bypass her house and went all the way up to campus to drop me off. I would say, Auntie, you're not tired doing all of this. And I would say, boy, I'm going to take me for travel in the evening. And she said, no. She insisted that if I was home, I should call her or she would have begs. Over the years, we kept in close contact. And it was not strange for my aunt to visit me by the campus to ensure I was doing okay or for me to drop by her office while I was in school, when I was walk foot, or even driving by if I was passing from work. She would literally grab my hand like a little child, drawing me to all the offices. This is my niece, this is my niece, doing quick introductions to everybody. She believed in my ambitions, and when people believe in you, you have to strive to make them proud. So I ensured that she had a front row seat to all of my accomplishments, and best believe she would cheer me on. I still have the videos of her celebrating and dancing. And on that note of dancing, my auntie, she could not dance. She had one move. It was a side rock with the hands going up and down occasionally. But she would work that move like it was nobody's business. At my wedding, when all the young people were in the middle flinging shoulders and doing the most, my auntie was to the side working her one move. And trust me, she was having the time of her life. As I transitioned to the working world, she took on the role of being my mentor. I swear to you, as soon as I started working, Auntie Sandra, make sure you put on a little money for do this, you know. Make sure you put on a little money for do this and that. Every conversation. She was a career woman, and she appreciated that I was a career woman as well. Honestly, I think we were both borderline workaholics. I can remember calling her in the late afternoons and saying, Hey, Auntie Sandra, you're there work, not true. She would laugh because she would always be at work. I can remember saying to her, boy, auntie, I don't feel like going to work, but may I go on? And she would say, yes, make sure you go to your little work. She understood and she respected having a good career. This woman's opinion, I respected deeply. And if I had a goal and an idea, I would discuss with her. She was a car woman, so simple things like choosing a vehicle, I could not buy a vehicle until Auntie Sandra signed off on it. The good memories are too many to count. But one of my favorite memory, I'm sure she would not even have realized that I took note. You see, it was one Saturday, we were on our way down. We had stopped to buy bread in Bargain Village. That is all clearly I remember. And when we got out of a car, a man approached her. He seemed to be not so fortunate. And the way the man came up, I was like, you know, who is this gentleman? Auntie Sandra laughed, how are you doing? And took out a parcel to give that man. I asked her, Auntie, you know this man? She did not know the man. She saw him in my pen, and she felt sorry for him. So she ensured she had something to give, give him every time she was there. How could I not love this woman? The type of person she was, her kindness, it knew no bones, no bones. Her drive, her belief in me to succeed, the, the things that she contributed to my life, I will never forget. Our last conversation, I sent her a message inviting her to my baby shower. After asking the details, she said, then how am I going to know if you bring if you don't tell me what kind of baby you're having? I laughed and I said, when I get there, auntie, I'm going to tell you. 
I did not get to tell her. But auntie, if you can hear, I had the baby and he's okay. I knew you would have visited me in the hospital and I knew you would have been happy because I know you were excited that I was finally pregnant. I will never forget you. And because of you, I will fight even harder to achieve those goals that we discussed. Those things that sometimes I question if a little country girl from Ballas River could achieve. But you always believe in me. Rest sweet, my sweet girl. Good evening, everyone. Words cannot express how I feel today. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> it should not have been what happened. <laughs> My aunt was someone who was special. She was the golden aunt. When my aunt that grew me died, she, she was the one that stepped up to the plate and played the role of the aunt that I had missed so much. She would call me and she would say, Chev, don't worry, do this, do that. When I was doing my house, when I bought the land, she said to me, Chev, you got the papers? I said, no. My aunt did not hesitate. Without money, without favor, she went, she got my title, she got everything for me. She was somebody who loved us. She loved us so much that she would not hesitate to do anything for us. I'm going to miss her a lot. I miss my Sunday call, video calls with her, speaking to my dad, cooking in the kitchen, speaking to Auntie Cutie and Auntie Pauline. I really miss that. I, risk, I miss calling to her at night and saying, Auntie, what are you doing in the people's office at 9 o'clock in the night? She would laugh. She would say, don't worry, I'm going to get home safe. I never knew that my worst fear would be reality. Someone would have been thinking of killing my aunt. But may her soul rest in peace and light per perpetual shine upon her. Come on, put your hands together. May the life I live speak for me. Where is Miss Shaw? May the life I live Speak for me when I'm resting in my grave. There is nothing that I can say. May the life I live speak for me. May the life I live. Speak for me, oh, may the life I live speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing that I can say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll have at this time, bless God, the floral tribute, family hymn by Tanisha Shaw. I'll say of the Lord that 
He is my refuge. In Him will I put all of my trust. He's taking me daily from glory to glory. I trust in my trust. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I will remember. The name of my God He is a warrior Yes, He is mighty In Him will I draw ah, In Him will I draw My defender, my shield and butler, my hope is built firmly on Him, on mountains in My God is before me, in Him will I trust, in Him will I trust. Some trust in chariots, some trust in but I will remember the name of my God. He is a warrior. Yes, he is mighty. In him will I trust, him will I trust, he's my defender, my shield and butler, my hope is My God is before me, in Him will I trust, in Him will I trust. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But I will remember the name of my God. He is a warrior. Yes, he is mighty. In him will I trust, him will I trust, in him will I trust, him will I trust. 
somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord another praise. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. In him will I trust. For they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Oh, glory to the Almighty God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. At this time, we'll be having the St. Mark's United Church Choir. They will be ministering. This is where Sister Sandra would go to church. Hallelujah. They are here. Their choir is here to minister this afternoon. And then after they minister, bless God, then our host pastor for St. Mark's United Church, mighty God, hallelujah, will be coming and he will be presenting to you, bless God, the day's speaker. So Reverend Tucker will be coming after the choir sing to present to you the day's speaker the messenger the sermon person and so in him will i trust so at this time put your hands together as you made the choir of the saint mark united church welcome come on put your hands together for them glory to god Pleasant afternoon to each and every one. This is a present afternoon to each and every one. Our ministers on the platform and all our members of this side. Bereaved families, close friends, and the rest of the congregation. Greeting in the precious name of Jesus. This is a short tribute from us at St. Mark's United Church. This lady is a special lady. She's loved by all. But it's one thing when she comes over and she comes with her sisters to church. She will sit very quietly until the end of the service. She would greet each and every one. But this special Sunday, when she comes with her two sisters, she said next time she come, she will bring her uncle with her. But the point I am going to give to you all, she always sit down and listen everyone speaks and give a testimony. But this special Sunday, my God, that lady stand up and he gives us a testimony. It was like she was preaching the old sermon to the old church. She's loved by all. She loves her families. She loves friends. She loves children. And most of all, she loves St. Mark's Church. Grieved families. One thing she asked for, please remember to put Mama's plaque up. Because that was the last thing she says to me in St. Mark's Church. Bereaved family, please don't grieve too much. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Oh Lord, ask let me. If when you give the best of your service, tell in the world that the Savior is come, be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He longest and say well done oh when i come to the end of 
my journey weary of life and the battle is one carrying the staff and the cross of redemption he'll understand and say of labor is ended and the reward of the race you have run oh the sweet rest prepare for the faithful Well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life, and the battle is won. Carry. and sisters, we have with us this afternoon Reverend Chung. Reverend Chung is the chairman of the Southern Region Mission Council of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Highlands. He's also the pastor of Ridgemount United Church in Mandeville. When the synod of the United Church heard about the death of Sandra, the moderator called me and asked me, what can we do to really support you? And I said, all right, moderator, when the time comes. Eventually, when he looked through his diary, he had an appointment. So guess what? He said to Reverend Chung, please go and support David and the team. So Reverend Chung, we are happy to have you, sir. Come and share the word. Let us put our hands together as we share. Greetings, sisters and brothers, friends all.
Thank you, Reverend Tucker. I extend the condolences of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands to the bereaved family. I bring you the sympathies of the Southern Regional Mission Council, our 62 congregations in the parishes of Clarendon, Manchester, St. Elizabeth, and a part of Trelawney. Friends, this is a, a difficult moment. It's one of those occasions when we ask the question, why? When life does not make sense. It was just over a year ago, I was preaching at a funeral in Kingston. A healthy, well, strong young man in the prime of his life, having been beset by cancer, gradually, slowly, and painfully wasted away, leaving a wife and two children. On that occasion, we were confronted by that reality when life does not make sense. This, again, is one of those moments when there is a part of us that, yes, we, we, we are grateful and we give God thanks and we celebrate a life, but we cannot help but ask, why? Why was this life taken in such a gruesome way? So I want to use this opportunity to offer a word that I hope by the Spirit of God will help us to navigate and to make sense of that which does not make sense. I want to read from Revelation 21. And it was referenced earlier in the song our brother Kenny sang. Revelation 21 from verse 1 to verse 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city. From verse the 1 new to Jerusalem verse 7. Coming down out of heaven then from God. Then I saw a new heaven a bride, and a new beautifully earth. dressed for her husband. For the first heaven. And I and heard a loud voice passed away. from the throne saying, And there was no longer any sea. God's dwelling place is I now among the people. I saw the holy city and God from verse 1 to verse 7. Coming they will down be out his people. Then from I saw a prepared heaven and a bride and beautifully earth. dressed for her husband. For the first heaven, God will wind and I heard a loud voice passed away. from the throne saying, And there was no longer any sea. There will be no more death. Dwelling place is I saw morning the people. Holy city, God from verse one to verse seven, coming down out of heaven. I saw the new heaven, bright and beautifully dressed for her. One who was seated on the throne, I heard the sound of her voice away from the throne, saying, "No longer will be no more death dwelling place." I saw the holy city, God from verse one to verse seven, coming down out of heaven. upon sacred text, may we hear a word from God. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want you to rest assured I'm not a long preacher, so you can bear me out. I hope that as we share together, I'll be able to hold your attention. 
you have been here for a long time. A lot has been said already. And so I am mindful of that. And I won't keep you long. I will be a little longer than two and a half minutes as allowed by the moderator. But don't worry, you'll be out of here before you can feel the split. So, the Jamaican culture is an oral culture. We're used to telling stories, Nancy stories. We talk about things. That's why companies like Digicel and Flow make so much money. Jamaicans like to talk, Jamaicans like to listen. We like to talk about what's going on and share the different experiences of our life. What come with our children, our grandchildren, grandparents love to boast about their children. We like a good story. Today I want to talk to you about three stories. One you have already heard, the story of Sandra's life. So eloquently told for us in the tributes, you heard the story of one who was conscientious in her work, who was diligent and devoted to her career and to her role as a legal secretary, as a paralegal, as a co-worker, as a colleague. You heard the story of one who was diligent, who was disciplined, who was devoted, who gave her time, her effort, who was conscientious and committed to her work. You heard from Nunes, Schofield, and Dillian and company as they talked. When we looked this morning and those from that company were asked to stand a large contingent, a grand representation, testimony to a woman who gave her all to her work. As one speaker said, she was married to one man. Nunes, Schofield, Dillian and company. That's part of her story. You heard a story of a woman who was committed to her family, who loved her nieces and nephews and all her relatives and made them important in her life. That was Sandra's story. You heard of her commitment to her church and her faith in her Lord. Her story is a good story of a life well lived and yet we also know that that story ended in quotes very tragically and yet still I want to say to you the story is not ended yes Sandra has died has transitioned but we who believe in the resurrection we who believe in the power of the one who the one who has power over death know that there is still another chapter to be written that gives us hope that gives us a sense of anticipation of expectation that yes we grieve and grieve we must I am not one of those who believe that funerals need to become parties. No, funerals are also a time to mourn and to grieve because a great loss has been experienced. Who is going to replace Sandra? We have suffered a great loss. One who was near and dear and precious to us. She'll never call us anymore. Can't take up the phone and have a conversation. She's not going to visit us anymore. So there is that reality that we must confront. The reality of death, the pain of loss, and the suffering caused by the untimely departure of one who was dear to us. But through this service, we have heard of a life that had a tremendous impact and who has left mem which has left memories that will linger with us for years to come. And so Sandra's story continues. It continues in the memories we will share of her, of the time spent with her, as, and the impact she had on our lives, and the blessing she brought to us, and the joy she gave to us. We will continue to tell her story when we sit around at our tables and we say, you know, Sandra, just sit there. So when we go to the office and we pass where she used to have her office and we say that used to be, we will continue to tell her story. 
And we look forward to the day when the final chapter will be written. When we will be reunited with her. Those who believe will be reunited with her. So the story is not finished. And don't feel that it has had a sad and terrible ending. The ending is not yet. It's just an ellipsis. Three little dots. If you have ever watched a, a suspense movie. And you are watching it and it just pulls you in. And then it just endrops. And you realize uh, there is a part two. There is another chapter. There, the end of the story has not yet been written. Therefore, do not grieve as those who have no hope. Our hope is in the one who has overcome death and the grave. That's Sandra's story in brief. Then there's the biblical story. The story of God. The story of God's work in history. The biblical story begins with a garden where everything is perfect. It's, it's, it's Eden. It's utopia. It, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. God made a perfect, flawless world with nothing wrong. And then something happened. And what was good and perfect, what God looked upon and says, this is good, became something not so good. Human beings who used to engage in a wonderful relationship with God, who used to have a wonderful time conversing with God, sharing fellowship uninhibited and unhindered with God, are running away from God. And they have been running away from God ever since. And yet the biblical story is one in which God continually pursues human beings. In the biblical story, one might be tempted to think that God is wasting his time. That the powers of evil and darkness are victorious. That God is wasting time pursuing human beings. In the biblical story, you have crime, you have murder, you have mayhem, you have disobedience, you have hate. Man's inhumanity towards his fellow human being. All of those things are to be found in scripture. And yet still, that's not how the story ends. The earth that was corrupted by bloodshed and wickedness and sin, injustice and iniquity, that Jesus says, reveals to John, he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It is like when you're reading that same book and you're wondering how the story ends and sometimes you're tempted to just go to the last chapter. Can I tell you something? God's story, the final chapter, has already been written and God wins. Gone men, wicked people don't win. God is a God of justice and righteousness. And the earth will indeed become filled with the glory of God even as the waters cover the sea. So John gets this vision of newness. That yes, in the present, things are bad. Things are hard. Things are difficult. But then he says, I saw a new heaven. A new earth. One in which righteousness dwells. Then I heard a loud voice, behold, the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God is among his people. My sisters and brothers, friends, yes. Vex, no. And it is okay to be vexed, to be angry. It is okay to be upset. It's a part of the human experience. It is a natural and normal human emotion. But the biblical story tells us how history unfolds. 
at the end of it all, it is God who has the last word. Death has been defeated. And Jesus Christ, by his glorious resurrection from the dead, has conquered. This is our God. This is our God. And so even though the enemy may want to suggest to us that he has won, we know it's a only a fool himself. We have seen the end of this and we know how things turn out. In the end, God wins. And those who are on God's side are on the winning side. And all the things that, that ail us and ache us in this vision. John says there was no more sea. And, and in the biblical imagery, the sea is what is to be feared. The waters, the roar, and they cover the mountains. And you run to the mountains and there is no place to hide because the sea overtakes the mountain. But John says there will be no more sea. That which divides heaven from earth is removed and God comes and makes his dwelling among us. And we enjoy the fullness of life as God intended it to be. No more night. No more pain. No more tears. Never crying that day. All praises to the great I am. We will live in the light of the risen Lamb. That is the rock on which we stand. That is the story of which we are a part when we believe in Jesus Christ. That is God's story. God wins every time, all the time. And those who are on God's side, those who put their trust in God, have this confident assurance that death is defeated. Paul says in Corinthians 15, the last enemy to be conquered is death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? That is the biblical story. And when we enter into God's life, into the life of God in Jesus Christ, that becomes our story as well. So we do not ignore or pretend that death is not real. We acknowledge it. But we understand that there's one who has more power than death. We know that the world is filled with evil and injustice. And there are vile and wicked people. But we know that our God is a God who is just. And he shall have his way. That gives us hope. So the biblical story, God's story, is about how God transforms and turns around and changes those things that seem so hopeless, so desperate. When we've come to those places where we feel as if there's nothing we can do and life makes absolutely no sense, we turn to the one who has everything in his hand. And so the last story, the third story, is our story. Your story and my story. Each one of us, as we go from day to day, are telling a story. Our lives is telling a story. We are writing a story by our life. And there is going to come a day when other people are going to talk about us. Like we're talking about Sandra today. When we won't be able to speak for ourselves. When others will describe the impact we had on them. And how we lived. And how we made them feel and what we did for them. They will remember both the good and the bad. Scripture tells us that every deed will be, is being recorded. With every secret thing. And so it seems to me then, if we are writing a story with our lives, we want to ensure that we are writing a good story. Nobody's story is perfect. Our lives are not always on, on an upward trajectory going upward and onward. It's more like this. 
Sometimes we are going to fall down. We have to get up back again. Sometimes we are going to be on top of the world. Other times we are going to feel like the world is on top of us. But when we place our lives in the hand of the one who controls history, our lives have new meaning. The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Life in all its fullness. Life as God intended for it to be. When we have that kind of life, we don't fear death. Whenever it comes, we are assured that we know the one who holds the future. And our lives are in his hand. So I ask you, as we give God thanks for Sandra's story, which continues to be written, as we thank God for the story that he, God, is writing, let us reflect on our own lives and the kind of story our life is telling. When you engage with somebody, what kind of impact do you leave? Every time you interact with somebody, you leave a piece of yourself with them. And we must ask ourselves, what am I leaving behind? It is a good thing, and the lawyers here will tell you, it is a good thing to have a will. Make sure you write down all the things you have and who you want to get it. And we are to be diligent in that. So nobody not fight over the dead left after we're gone. But more than leaving material things, can your story leave a legacy of faith, of kindness, of diligence? Can you bequeath to those who come in contact with you and those whom you leave behind a good aroma? That when they speak of you, it brings a smile on their faces. Can you leave a story that long after you're gone, generations, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren will talk about you? You remember how she was kind. You remember how he was patient. You remember how he was helpful. You remember how he trust God. What will your story be after you are gone? What will be said of you? And when your days on this earth are over, will you look forward to that day when you will be risen, risen with Christ? On that great resurrection morning, will you be in the number? What kind of story are you writing? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise? Come on, somebody still give the Lord a praise. Thank you very much for such timely and soothing word of comfort to the family and to all of us and all we have to do is to just keep our eyes on Jesus at this time we will be having the prayer for the family and I ask you not to go for there's a thank you that will be coming after the prayer for the family so I'm asking at this time all the family members to come as close as possible. If you are on the outside, please come on inside. If you are on the outside, please come on inside. It's time to pray for you. And I ask the congregation, you have done so well. Please don't go until we have finished the prayer and the thank you and go into the recessional hymn. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask Pastor Samuel Deacon to come and he is, will be praying this prayer for the family. For you, I am.
am praying for you. I am praying for you. I am praying. I am praying for you. Yes, for you. the congregation to stand while the family members remain seated. Yes. Amen. As we go to God in prayer. Amen. For you I am praying. Hallelujah. For you I am praying for you I am I'm praying for you. Let us engage in prayer. Eternal God and our Father, our friend, our shepherd, today, Lord, we come to you to give you thanks for your great mercy and for your love towards the children of men. We thank you for dying on the cross. Through your shed blood, we have access unto the throne of grace. You tasted of death, Lord, that we can have life. You went down to hell that we can go to heaven. We worship you. We adore you. We praise you, Lord, for all your goodness. Lord, here we are today in this Thanksgiving service for our friend, our sister. Oh God, somebody that is so nice to all of us. We mourn our passing. Every man today that have anything to do with Sandra, we are deeply mourning. We mourn in the loss of her. We are sad in our hearts. But you said in your words, let not your heart be troubled. For he that believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house and many mansions, if it were not so, you have, would have told us. I pray today for the family members. Oh God, I know it is very hard. It is hard to lose our loved ones to the grave. Hallelujah. Today we are mourning deeply, Lord. Because we know Jesus that the enemy have tried to do to vex the family. But I pray that you will comfort our hearts today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that thou will strengthen everybody Every one of us, all the niece, the nephews, the sisters, the brothers. Oh God, I pray today. Because when you were here, Jesus. Oh God, you stands and weep. At the grave where Lazarus sleep. Oh God, we thank you. The only hope that we have today. Is that you is a resurrection and a life. And if we believe in you. Though we are dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believe shall never die. I pray, Lord, that they will comfort the family members. Strengthen them, if ever a time. They need their strength is now. Hallelujah. If ever a time they need to be comforted is now. I pray, God. Hallelujah. That they will bind them together. 
with loves that cannot be broken. The cord that cannot be broken. Oh God, we pray today that thou will strengthen every one of them. Give them the grace, Lord, the courage, the strength. I pray for all of us today because there are so many that are not family and we are mourning. Hallelujah. For Sanja have touched the life of so many of us. I pray today that thou will be with us. Guide every man. Strengthen them. And comfort all of us. As this our time of bereavement. I pray your Holy Spirit. Will be with us. As we look to you and tell you thanks. In Jesus name. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'll be asking at this time, Sharon Stewart and Yvonne Sonica's sister, they will come to bring the thank you, and then after we'll be doing the recessional hymn. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Sandra Risden family, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude and thanks to each and every one of you who prayed, called, sent a text of comforting words, those who came and sit by, give a, give a hug, and those who came from far and near Thank you to family members and those who work tirelessly to make this journey a bearable one. We take solace knowing that we are not alone. Thanks for the, un for the incredible support surrounding us. Thanks to Witter and Son for their wonderful job. May God continue to bless us all, spiritually, mentally, and in good health. Thanks again. Blessing and love to all. Amen. Can somebody say amen? We are going to do the recessional hymn at this time. So we are asking the undertaker to come at this time as we prepare for exit. We will exit as followed. Please listen carefully. After doing the first verse, the chorus, the platform party, which will be the, all the ministers will go in front. The choir will follow the minister. The casket will follow after the Biri family will follow the casket and then the congregation will follow the Biri family. Again, when we do the first verse on the chorus, the platform party, which consists of the pastors, will go in front. The choir will follow behind, then the casket, then the family, and then the congregation. Please stand with me at this time. We'll do some glad morning. We shall see Jesus in the air. And remember, we will be going to the Risden, to the Risden home at Brands Hill. Some glad morning. We shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me. Joy is ours to share. What rejoicing that will be. When the saints shall rise, headed for the true belief, yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting! On the happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory! Seem that now 
now I almost see all the saints are dead. Rising for the true belief that is right in the twinkling of the night. Change with them to be. All the living saints to fly to that true belief. The father said, Oh, what singing? Oh, what shall 